Welcome everyone to the webinar on From OT to IT and Cloud. This is bridging the operational and informational technologies through our UniLogic all-in-one programming environments for our UniStream series controllers. So I am Justin Parker. I'm part of our applications engineer team at Unitronics. I help provide uh, some technical support through day and day activities and uh, for all for products and uh, I'm conducting this webinar here today. So if you have uh, any questions, we'd save them for the ends. Uh, let's go next slide here. Basic agenda for this presentation. So we're going to try to take up the whole hour here today. Uh, we're going to go over the IT, OT slash IT uh, difference, differences between them and what we have to offer. Uh, we're also going to do a bit of UniCloud. I know people are definitely interested in that. It's our cloud-based uh, environment for our UniStream or even Vision series controllers uh, if you're going to connect it with one of our routers. And we can go and do some demos as well of our software in the UniCloud and uh, Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, save them for the ends and we'll go over them. All right, so operational technology is basically referring to our hardware and some of our software uh, settings for control devices, processes. Uh, basically, this is gonna include the SCADA software. It's gonna include our PLCs any sort of machinery that's working in your industrial environments that controls your uh, environments. Uh, it's going to be operational technology because it's operating. All right, hopefully that makes sense. And we'll go to the next slide. So what is information technology? So basically this is going to encompass, so it's kind of like networking related and information related, information processing, uh, the data centers, cloud system. It's just uh, the data that is going to be managed from your actual operations, not really meant to manage the actual, uh, do actual physical things like operational technology would. It's just going to manage the data that you're getting back uh, from these operations that are going on. All right, so on this slide, we have our communication protocols. You can see that we separated it by OT and IT. So some differences in the general protocols are gonna be used by these two different types of communications or two different types of softwares. So IT generally just going to be used to communicate with backend sort of devices. You do like REST API, MQTT. Uh, MQTT is actually used uh, to communicate with our UniCloud. You can also use SQL. You want to communicate with your own database. Our newest UniLogic actually supporting OCPP, which is a communication protocol for uh, electric chargers. It's, uh, it's an open source communication protocol to electric chargers. Very cool. Uh, so OT, you got your general communication protocols, Ethernet IP, Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, all just to communicate with various industrial technologies that you have, as well as IO Link. We also support that uh, through our IO Link master, which would uh, communicate to our Unistream controllers with uh, Ethernet IP. So we'll go over that. It's just one of our operational technologies that we offer here at Unitronics would be the IO Link Master. Here we go, and we'll get into these different operational technologies that we offer. Obviously, the main line that we have is our Unistream product line, and that is for our PLC controllers. You can see below that we offer three different types of controllers. The first one is a modular type controller. This controller uh, has detachable IO units on it. Uh, so you will not have to specify what IO you want. You can just attach uh, different IO units based on your IO needs. You can see that here on the back side of the controller, the different um, detachable I.O. units you can include. 
And this can expand up to 2048 different IOs through um, expansion cables just to keep expanding the IOs. And of course, it also just comes in different uh, screen sizes here, different uh, selections for screen sizes. And that is our modular controller. We also offer a built-in PLC. This just comes with a HMI and as well as built-in with the IO on board. So you don't have to uh, include different IO units like you had to on this. It actually just comes with IO included on the back. But it also can be expanded, uh, just how it was expanded in the modular controller. You go and expand it to these different detachable I.O. units, as well as coming in different screen sizes. And so you also have the Unistream PLC, which is our headless PLC, similar to the built-in units. It comes with I.O. on board. And it can also be expanded to the 2000 IOs through the expansion cables and the detachable IOs. And uh, to view your actual HMI, you can use VNC. So you can attach the VNC to a USL unit that we also sell, just a screen, or you can use a any sort of VNC client like your computer or a phone app that has a VNC connection. All right. And as I mentioned before, we do support IO Link, which is a communication protocol for uh, some sensor devices. Uh, it does help you get more data from these actual sensors instead of just a single data points you can get some additional data like warnings or alarms proximity data stuff like that just increases the actual intelligence of what you're receiving back and uh, this is done with our IO link masters you see that this is our IO link master over here. It just communicates through Ethernet IP and the actual master will communicate with IO link to your actual IO link devices. And you can see that we can communicate various protocols to any sort of other system or SCADA with our Unistream product. All right, and so now we have UniLogic, which is our programming environment for our UniStream series controllers. UniLogic is a completely free to use software for programming. And as you can see, it does include a typical industrial standard ladder programming, as well as the option to include C++ and structured text and you can combine these different languages all in one programming environment. So if you want to have a function that's built in C++ to do some sort of mathematical operation or you're just more familiar with how using uh, C++ with like arrays and whatnot, you can just build that out as a function and call that in your actual ladder programming. All right, so now we'll be going into our UniLogic demo. So here we got the UniLogic software open. You see that we can make a new project here, and we'll just call this OT Demo with UniLogic. And we can open up a project for this modular controller here. Select this as our hardware configuration. So now our software is loaded here, and this software is completely free to use. Uh, it's our development environment for our Unistream series controllers. As you saw before, you can select the PLC model from here, any type of PLC that we have on our Unistream series line. And basically, we can set up our communications as well here in this Solution Explorer. You see that there's the PLC communications drop down here. 
you open this up and you can see the definition for the physical and then you have our protocols. So our protocols are going to be used to communicate with the uh, various OT devices. You can communicate with our Modbus, you got your Ethernet IP, you even got a can open which uh, comes with a uh, modular unit. So you can as a CAN bus and RS-45 uh, ports attached to the CPU. So let's get into some basic definitions. For example, Modbus here, a very common protocol to use to communicate. We have a uh, panel Ethernet. All of our Unistream controllers have Ethernet ports. Uh, so you can define our Ethernet settings here in the physical section. You got the panel Ethernet here. You define the IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, which I've already set up in uh, my default project settings. Um, so it's a nice way to set them up by default is just uh, setting it in your project setting. But this can be changed right here. You can add a DNS server, which is important if you're communicating with uh, REST APIs or uh, our UniCloud communications when we get into some of the other protocols that are supported for mainly IT type purposes. So we'll go into the Modbus configuration here. So we got the Modbus and then we have master and we have slave. So our controller can act as either a master or a slave. We come in here, we can select the panel ethernet or if we feel like it's, or we're going to do the RS-45 on the CPU ports, we can also set up a definition there. So we'll stick with the panel Ethernet, and we click the Add New Remote Slave. We come over to our Properties window. We can set this active periodic. So this is for our periodic commands, which are just running uh, periodically based on a set time interval that you will see if I add a new operation, for example, on the coils, you can see that this periodic time interval is dependent on this column right here. And it is uh, set on a uh, default of 100 milliseconds. And you can change it per command or per uh, data that you're reading. So, uh, Basic configuration, active, periodic. You're probably just going to want this always on. You can do a general dot on uh, system bit right there. Set the definition for the IP address that you're communicating with. See just basic IP here. Uh, where are the 099s? So maybe the, the controller or whatever we're communicating with as the slave device is on this address. And uh, then we just set up our commands. Pretty simple. You add the tag here. What are we reading here? Maybe it's an input on a different controller, input zero. Uh, and then set up the command type to match. And you got some optional tags for active and the uh, status if something is going wrong with your commands. We also have the option if you're not going to do periodic commands, uh, maybe you're starting a device, you want to set that up as a, a periodic command. You can do that, set it up here. You're going to have to use the ladder to actually call this a periodic command. So you just set that up on the a periodic section here, and you can go into the ladder and use that to actually call the a periodic command. So that's basically the definition that is for our um, Modbus here. Uh, you can also select float type if uh, your device is using a slave device using a different type for the floats. You can select that here, which is pretty useful. Uh, what else? So slaves, uh, you can set the device up as a slave. It doesn't come with built-in addressing because all the tags are made uh, as you build your projects. So you can go here, add a new slave. So now our Unistream device is acting as a master and a slave. And you can set up the addressing. So now you can have this set to address zero, whatever you need. 
to add here, you can do that and select if you would like it to be read write or only read. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, you also got, if you're using the serial for RS-485, you have your serial comm settings here. And so you can change this to match what your other device is using, which is very important. Along with the Modbus protocol, we also have the Ethernet IP protocol. You see that there's definition for that is down here. We got scanner or adapter settings. Ethernet IP actually runs off of our CPU IP address. So you also have to configure that. It's just completely separate IP settings for CPU Ethernet. So you come here and you can set that uh, to a IP that's within our subnets. So we can do 10.2.2.100. And that is good for that. And so come down here, you want to set up your Unistream as a scanner device. You just import an EDS file from the adapter, or you can add it manually here if you know that your adapter settings and you want to set up the input and output data. So a good uh, just example of an EDS here to show you. you just import the EDS here, nice and simple. And it, the inputs and outputs are already configured. You come here to the I.O. section. You see these inputs are already here. You can see it. And here we are. Okay. So as long with uh, being able to import the EDS, you can also set it up manually. A good way to read the data is actually using a struct. So you come down here to the structs section. You can add a new struct. Say we're reading some sort of, uh, not sure, some sort of sensor data. So we just set up uh, the sensor device as the name of the struct. You can set the uh, ID for maybe like what the device is, like maybe it has some sort of ID associated with it. Whatever we're reading based on our adapter settings, we'll just put in here. As sort of mixed data type, we can do maybe as an ID, as a name, whatever it has, you just add it here to the struct. You just got to make sure that you are doing it uh, so that it matches the actual input data that you're reading from your adapter. Uh, so say we got some sort of sensor value reading here, maybe as a real temperature and there we go so just some basic example of how you can set up a struct here now so for the actual struct instance you'll have to come here to the global and, and then it initiates a variable of that struct type scroll all the way down on your type you see this struct that we created the sensor device okay we do device one inputs and that's good. Here we go. We got the instance here in the global tags. We can come here and set this tag up to be the inputs. Delete that dot. And then the whole struct itself is being read as the inputs. And whatever data is being read from our uh, adapter device just gets populated here in this global tag as the struct data. So that's good. We can also do the same similar thing uh, when we're trying to set up our adapter. If we're going to set up our Unistream as an adapter, we just go ahead, add the node, and we set the inputs and outputs similarly to how we had done before. For example, we want this to also send the same data that we had before. And that was called, whatever it was called, the device one inputs. Say we're just sending that same sort of data back to a different device or whatnot. And there we go. And you could also do the same sort of thing for the outputs. If you want to make another struct, you can do that. Make a struct for the outputs. Do sensor device outputs. Uh, outputs. So then make this a whole separate struct type 
And so you can have this for uh, on slash off states. You can shut off the device. Uh, config settings, whatever settings you're adding. And so basically, initiate this as the outputs device. Outputs, select the type, and we just specify that it's the outputs. And there we go. Now you can just add this as your output settings. And just going to make sure that you are using it as in a specified amount of bytes. You can't just add a bit in it. You at 16, unfortunately. All right. All right, and so another device that Unitronics offers is a IO link device. So this can connect to your Unistream controller. It uses Ethernet's IP and it will just be built in if you can come up to this hardware configuration and add the corresponding IO link master device. So you can see here we have the different options that Unitronics offers for IO link devices and IO link masters. So we just add the one of the master devices here, the four port A1. You can do that. You see it automatically adds the EDS and IO link um, definition here in our Ethernet IP settings. You go back up to the IO link up here. You can see the device here. And what we can do is add our hubs that have different input outputs, or we can add an actual IO link device to one of these ports here. And what IO link devices use is an IODD file to define the data that they're reading in. And so we can do that here and import an IODD file and be able to see what data it is taking in in the inputs and outputs section. So go in here, you see that master ILO link here. And you see that the port one has the data here. It is simply just four bits that this IODD has and that it's reading. It's just an error bits, is it too close, uh, an alarm, and then the actual sensor if it's outputting. So that's basically pretty simple. You just have to add the IODD to your IO link device and be able to read that data in like that. So that is all done through this uh, configuration here in the IO link section. And you can also add other uh, Unitronics URB TCP just communicates via Modbus uh, to TCP and it uh, has all sorts of different uh, devices that you can add here such that uh, just additional IO options for remote uh, IOs capabilities. All right, so that's uh, the overview for the OT uh, with uh, our protocols and our IO link and URB adapter devices that I'll just add it here on the Unilogic software. Alright, so now we have Unitronics in IT. You can see our different various protocols we support for IT type protocols. Of course, we have a REST API. REST API is a very powerful type protocol to communicate with different various different applications. It's good for data exchange in different uh, application types. You want to communicate from one application to another. You can use REST API. We also have MQTT. It's a different protocol here for different IoT type devices. And what else? So we have web server. It's actually built into our Unitronics uh, controller, Unistream controller. You just set up the web server like you would an HMI screen, and it will be accessible 
via the internet if your Unitronix controller is connected to the internet or you might have to use a LAN connection. Um, you don't actually need to use any HTML coding, uh, that is just optional. And so OPC UA, it's a nice protocol for communicating uh, to different industrial communications, machine to machine. We can act as a OPC UA server, and this is just integrated through our Unistream PLC, as well as supporting SQL for communicating with the MySQL database or different SQL databases. And of course, last but not least, UniCloud is our all-in-one or our integrated cloud platform that will simplify the data management for your Unistream controller. Just no cloud needed, uh, no code needed. You definitely do need a cloud. You do need a which is hosted with our AWS, so very reliable servers. All right, <clears throat> different communication ports that we have here. Obviously, so you have a command bus uh, for communication, Ethernet, RS-45, RS-32. All these different uh, ports are available on our Unistream devices um, to communicate with their various IT protocols shown on the right. And yeah, we'll get into these. So Industry 4.0, it's built right into your Unistream controller. You got all these different protocols, just easily integratable in your controller. So the Unistream can act as a OPC UA server, you allow devices like SCADA or systems like SCADA and or MES to be able to read or even write data tags uh, over secure communication protocols. And it is just auto discoverable and easily integratable with our Unilogic. And so you also have REST API. So you want to pull different data from the internet, so you like uh, locational data, some sort of dynamic data that you need to pull, like temperature, humidity, all seen on this screen, can be pulled from the internet with a REST API. It also supports BACnets, so BACnet uh, can be bought as a package into our Unistream controller, just a one-time license fee required for the activation. Very good uh, communication protocol for our, the industrial processes like HVAC. As I mentioned before, we support OCPP on our newest Unilogic, and uh, this will allow you to communicate with electric charging stations, be able to see uh, the load balancing, uh, the profiles for different charging, and uh, user management, uh, so you can see what uh, who's plugged in, uh, make sure you're charging them. All right, and so we're back in Unity Logic here, and we're just going to go over different IT protocols that you can use and how it's easily be easily integrated with our Uni Logic program. So you can see here, uh, Solution Explorer is where you're going to find all your different project aspects. So web server first on for mo for most, you just click here to enable this web server, creates you a nice little web page where you can use the same sort of features as your HMI, drag and drop things and add buttons and whatnot, anything you need here can just be added. You can also take a current screen that you have and add that to the web server. So you can just export that current screen as a web server screen so that you don't have to rebuild your HMI if you want it to be viewed on a web server. So we can scroll down and see the other IT type protocols so you got your SQL here and you want to add your SQL database. You're just going to have to use, our, use the connection details to connect with that. And then you're going to have to build out your SQL queries here. You can build your queries. 
and whatnot. Let's skip over that. And REST API, as I was shown before, just, just showing you the configurations here. So down here, nice and easy, be able to just input this kind of data as here, request data. And so as well as UniCloud, you got your UniCloud here. You just click to enable this, and then you're just going to have to log into your actual UniCloud account and link up the asset type, add tags, alarms. You want to enable your alarms to be read with the UniCloud. Go ahead, do that. Remote access, of course, and all that. So you add some tags here. You're going to have to buy a subscription based on the amount of tags that you're reading and writing. Yeah, so that is uh, just an overview of how are the IT protocols that you have in UniLogic and yeah, how easily it is to configure in our Solution Explorer down here with just some built-in protocols. All right. All right, so once you've connected your controller to the UniCloud, you can build a dashboard for it. And the dashboard can include various things related to your tag data that you're reading from your controller uh, that you set up with your asset type. So we can view here that we have different uh, controllers connected under this demo account, and they're all reading different tag data. We can look at this raw tag data here. Just get an idea of the data that we can take in from uh, our Unistream controller and how we can use dashboards to display this data in a way that is easily read so you can see that we're very reading various data related to a pump on this one. And that raw data can be viewed via a dashboard. So you go here, this is the default dashboard for this user. This is all just user built dashboards. And we can take a look here at the air compressor dashboard for our air compressor controllers. So we click on this and it's automatically filtered now for only the controllers that are using the air compressor type asset type. And you can see that they're all listed here in a sort of a table that you can view the different controllers. You can even click on a specific controller here to uh, view that controller's data as a dashboard. If it wants to load. And you can see that it's now filtered just for this one asset that we clicked on. And uh, yeah, so we can see that's nice. We can go back. All right, so we go back and we can see all the controllers again. So we can see that this dashboard's laid out nicely. So you can see the uh, working hours um, for certain machines here. Uh, see that we have 10 PLCs connected via this widget and that none of them are in any sort of critical alarm. Very important here. You can actually set up alarms to trigger uh, to a SMS notification in um, UniCloud. So you don't have to actually have built-in SMS alerts on your Unistream project. You can set that up in the events on UniCloud. And you can see different table data here that we have for like temperature. You see the temperatures, energy usage. We got some moisture data, and we can also VNC into different controllers uh, from UniCloud. Just that uh, they would have to actually be connected. Uh, but yeah do that and we go back to the home and you're going to view different uh, dashboard types for our other controllers like uh, water treatments controllers see same sort of type of layout that we have 
You want to make sure your controllers aren't in any sort of critical alert. They're still connected. Just nice, easy to view layouts of data here. Water tank level, you see the water tank level got low. Is it too low, is it too high? You can just view that pretty easily with a graph. And of course, uh, preventative maintenance is a very nice aspect that you can include here. Uh, let's just take a look at this overview first. This is a nice layout of data that we have here. See that you've got all the working hours of the mine for the machines and different uh, views of the actual data on a per PLC basis here on this dashboard. Nice. And so preventative maintenance is uh, important. So we can see that one of our tag data is we're reading the pump temp and this pump temp is above 70 degrees C. So it's triggering a minor alarm here. Uh, so be something you might want to look at and adjust if uh, temperatures are getting too high on your pumps and whatnot. And uh, down here, I got a nice table just to view the actual raw data, I believe, for some of the different uh, readings that we're taking, the date timestamp. So, yeah. So preventative maintenance, very important. Uh, you could also implement uh, different widgets to uh, reset the working hours or to uh, update uh, the maintenance. Yeah. So that's viewed. All right, so it looks like we're coming up on the end of our presentation here. Uh, maybe a little earlier than the hour mark, which will leave us some time for questions. Let's go over an overview of the benefits of using our Unitronics environments uh, within the OT and IT operations. First and foremost, we have integration. Uh, it's a unified hardware and software environment, which uh, allows for the easy integration of any sort of OT and IT devices right within the UniLogic software itself. This of course leads to increased efficiency if you're adding multiple devices on your uh, project. You can just easily just add all that in one area and define all the communications. If you're using uh, IO Link, you just easily add that to the hardware configuration. Scalability, so once you build your project, it'll be easy to scale this to multiple controllers. Uh, you just have to redefine some communication settings potentially, but that would be about it. It's just easily uh, scalable from there. You have one sort of asset type for multiple uh, Unistream controllers and within the same project type, and that can be used for multiple controllers. And reliability, of course, uh, so robust and secure infrastructure. Uh, the Unitronics environment has been around for some time now. And uh, with that, we have now have reliable software. We have a nice cloud environment for the in, that is easily integratable within the actual software itself. So no code needed for that. And yeah, those are some of, just some of the benefits of using the Unitronics environment. And so yeah, that's about it. Uh, 